Princess Vicky had a stormy relationship with her son Wilhelm. It is alleged that this relationship led the young man to hate England. Please continue to support my channel by subscribing. The self-confessed favourite grandchild of Queen Victoria, Wilhelm, cradled the body of his grandmother during her last dying hours. It was a far cry away from the hateful scenes of the war between Britain and Germany in later years. The Kaiser was power hungry and full of himself. He thought of himself humbly as a Queen's favourite grandson. His love for his grandmother was the opposite of his hatred for his English mother, Victoria's eldest daughter, Princess Victoria, known to her family as Vicky. The Kaiser's mother married young at 17, as was often the case with royal women. The chosen suitor was a German, just like her father, and fulfilled his dreams of one of his children marrying into the German throne. The suitor chosen was Prince Friedrich, known as Fritz, and the pair were deeply in love. The pair did not struggle to conceive, and only three months later she was pregnant. This pregnancy would go on to have a traumatic end. The baby had become breech, and there were few safe procedures that could be performed, and so a natural delivery went ahead, with the baby in a breech position. A caesarean section was very new at the time, and had a very high maternal mortality rate, and so this procedure was out of question. Had there been better medical care at the time, the prince would perhaps not have been handicapped from birth. The future Kaiser Wilhelm II was forcefully and traumatically born into this world, leaving him with an arm that did not work. Three days after his birth, his handicap was noticed by a nursemaid who noted that his damaged left arm hung limply at his side. What was not known at the time due to a lack of medical education was that the traumatic birth had caused a condition called Erd's palsy, which leads to damage being made to the nerves. This caused his arm to be completely paralysed with problems with growing also. Princess Vicky was embarrassed by the air she had produced, and although it was no fault of either the mother or child, this male heir was supposed to represent strength and an ability to strengthen the relationship between Germany and Britain. To Princess Vicky, her son's condition represented weakness and reflected badly on her. Perhaps this is why she went to such disgusting lengths to try to cure him. Princess Vicky was perhaps in denial that her son's condition was a permanent and lifelong one. She tried to fix his arm. She was convinced that the damage could be repaired. This is when the start of some disturbing and bizarre rituals were done to make the arm work again. At only six months, when his mother had realised he was still paralysed in his arm, she began to give him animal baths. Twice a week, his arm was put inside of a freshly slaughtered hare. The idea was that the warm blood would transfer vitality to the limb and make it work again. Of course this did not work but was perhaps just more traumatic for the infant. Vicky wrote to her mother that it was such a nasty horrible idea. Her mother Queen Victoria was reportedly both shocked and amused by this old wives superstition. As the tot grew older and began to walk, Princess Vicky would tie his arm behind his back. She hoped that by taking away the use of the arm he could use, it would force him to use the arm that had been left free, but that was paralysed. This meant that the tot no longer had use of any of his arms, which caused him great distress, and Vicky noted that he gets so fretful and cross and violent and passionate that it makes me quite nervous sometimes. If these rituals were not disturbing enough for the young boy, he was also subjected to electrotherapy for most of his childhood. This procedure would take place almost daily, meaning he would suffer in pain 
every single day of his childhood for something that could never be cured. During the procedure, the young boy's head would hang to the side while he was strapped into an appliance so that he could not escape. A metal rod was used to straighten his back and a screw to pull his head upright. This therapy would have been agony for the young boy. Was it done out of love to fix his arm or was it done to try to cure the embarrassment his mother felt over his disability? The machine that was used was scribbled down as an illustration that Vicky drew to show her mother what they were using to try to cure him. The princess begged Queen Victoria that when the boy visits Windsor, no one should see him with the machine on, not the servants or brothers or sisters, and that it should not be talked about as it would be very painful to us. This taught him to hide his disability and the mindless torture his mother subjected him to, and so when he was an adult, he would also try to hide his disability, and in photographs always held gloves, a gun or a sword to disguise his withered arm. When he was age 16, he was finally free from his mother's painful procedures. He was sent to a middle-class grammar school in Kassel, Germany with his tutor. The teen started to write erotic letters to his mother of the dreams he was having and he weirdly developed a kind of crush on her. I dreamt last night that I was walking with you. You put your dear arm around my waist, pulled your glove off your dear left hand and showed me your dear beautiful hand which I instantly covered with kisses. I wish you would do the same when I am in Berlin, alone with you in the evening. This would be the last time that Wilhelm wrote to his mother. He perhaps felt rejected when she replied, with 20-page letters about politics, music and art, avoiding his erotic dreams completely. From this moment on, his crush turned into a deep hatred for his mother. Maybe he was embarrassed for being rejected. When his father died of cancer in 1888 at the palace in Potsdam, Wilhelm was in full swing of loathing for his mother and her liberal English ideas. The reason he hated England were because of the medical failings by an English doctor that led to his arm becoming paralysed. An English doctor also diagnosed his father's cancer as being benign when it wasn't and he later died causing him to dislike England even more. He reported, one cannot have enough hatred for England. Not surprising, but the man's traumatic and torturous childhood led him to be highly strung and aggressive. He continued to have desperate outbursts. The Queen died in 1901, followed only months later by his mother who also died of cancer. Wilhelm's ties with Britain were severed abruptly and this only fueled his obsession to be better than his English cousins, and Europe was on a trajectory to war.